Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making Korean crab stew. Gokgetang. That voiceover was my husband because my pronunciation is so awful I had to have him do it. As much as I practiced, it just wasn't working for me. So anyways, if you guys want to know how to make Korean crab stew, the Gokgetang, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it, and watch me cook. These are the ingredients that you guys need. I know it seems like a lot, but this dish is a whole lot easier than all of this right here that's showing. So don't be afraid. Let's get started. This is going to go super fast once we have all the vegetables taken care of. If you cook Korean food, then you know anchovies is part of our broth from most dishes or soups. But I wanted to show you guys the bag, which I purchased mine from. You can find them in bags or boxes. And this little strainer that I'll be using. They have like little tea bag type of uh, bags you can buy in the store as well but you can throw those in there if you don't have one of these strainers um, if you don't have either one it's fine just go ahead and throw it all in there just make sure you know exactly how many you put in there just pick them out when you're done but the first thing I want to show you guys is again ripping off the head pulling the body apart and taking out the black stuff as basically the innards and it'll make your broth bitter so you want to remove all of those out of there so I'm going to go ahead and speed this process up, but before I do, let me do this a couple more times to show you guys again. The body does split fairly easily, so you don't have to put too much effort into this. Just rip off the head, pull the body apart, and take out the black thing that you see right in there. As for the fish bones, or the, um, bo yeah, the bones, I guess, that you see in there, don't worry about those. They're going to be in our strainer. I mean, they don't really just come out. You can eat them. They will be soft enough to chew on, but... I mean, I just prefer to do it this way. But here we go. I'm going to go and speed this up for you guys because you don't need to see all 14 anchovies being pulled apart like this. All right, I'm about to wrap things up and I wanted to show you guys how I handle this. Just throw it right in there like that. Squeeze it together <laughs> and I'm showing you the hook because you would apply that hook onto the side of your pot. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my kelp in there. I want to show you guys the size of the kelp that I am using. It's about the hand size of my hand. So I'm going to guesstimate like 4x4, four 5x5 four, five five piece of kelp. Throw that right into the pot as well as your... Uh, little strainer of anchovies and again the hook just goes right on the side of the pot well if I can make it over there but <laughs> it's just so you don't lose it all in there and it's just easier to pull out later that's all as for the crab I found this at my local Korean store at Zion market here in obviously Southern California but it's frozen, it comes cleaned and cut already. If you wanna use fresh live crab, you can do so as well. That's not my kind of thing, but if you guys wanna do that, you can do that. So if you wanna take care of them humanely, go ahead and put them in a large pot of ice water and throw them in the freezer for like 30 to 60 minutes and you can handle them afterwards. But for me, I'm gonna have it all done so I don't have to do that extra step. And uh, that's just how I function here. <laughs> But again, all I'm going to do is go ahead and throw them inside of a large bowl. You should use one larger than that, but a large bowl. And I'm going to throw some water in there and let it sit and defrost while I go ahead and start with the veggies. But I wanted to show you guys another package that I'm just opening up so you guys can see, which is basically the same thing as I showed you before. You open up the box, rip off your plastic on the outer side, and then you go ahead and just open this right up. If I can, give me a second. <laughs> And ta-da! Here we go. All frozen in there. Just open up the plastic around that. Again, dunk this right into the cold bowl of water. Is that right? Cold water bowl. Yeah, cold water bowl. And let it sit there and defrost while we work on our veggies next. All right, as you can see, these are the veggies I'm gonna go ahead and get started with. I do have tofu. This is optional. I just like tofu a lot, and so I just wanna throw it into my stew. I'm using a whole entire package because I'm using three pounds worth of crab, but if you're gonna use half of that amount, just use half a package. 
or you can omit this all together. But I mean, if you want to have more evenly sliced tofu, I just always cut them in half and then half again and another half again. So this way I kind of get almost the same size of every bite of tofu, I guess. The next thing, if you can find zucchini, use zucchini. But if you cannot, like me, I ended up having to buy squash, but they were tiny squash. And I like to cut mine up like this. Other people cut it um, horizontally. I like to cut mine vertically because I feel like it's easier to find inside your pot of stew and it's just easier to eat because they're all gonna like shrivel up anyways inside of there. So this is again how I like to do it. Cut yours however you want to do it. Next up is my radish, the Korean radish. I'm gonna go ahead and split this up. This is about two inches worth for me. Again, three pounds. You guys are gonna probably do half. And half, about a pound, pound and a half will feed about four to five people. So this is gonna feed anywhere between like eight to 10 people. But I mean, realistically, we just like crab a lot. So we're gonna finish probably most of this today. But again, all we wanna do is cut these up into small pieces. I'm gonna show you the thin slices once I'm done slicing this up just so you guys have a better idea as well. But we're gonna do all of them the exact same way. Cut them to about that size. Next up is my green pepper. If you guys can't find just the regular Korean green pepper, go ahead and just use a jalapeno. This dish is normally a spicy stew, so you're gonna wanna have some spice in this. My knife sucks. Hold up, let me show you guys something that I just bought a few months ago and I love it so much. All right, this is my little knife sharpener. Check this out, fine and coarse. It's a tiny little thing. It's like the size of my hand, look at that. It is tiny, but it works so well. And it's like $5 or something like that. I'm gonna sh I'll link that below in my Amazon shop. But I mean, move this back and forth a little bit and you guys are gonna be surprised too. So I'm gonna show you guys right now. I don't have much left to cut, but it's still gonna cut the pepper better than it did before. Look at this, it just chops right through. So amazing. I mean, I have to share this with you guys because it was so good and I was just so impressed with it. But do the same with your red pepper. Again, red pepper is completely optional. I'm only throwing that in there just to throw some color into my dish as well. So you don't necessarily need it. These are crown daisies. You can find these in your local Asian market as well. If you can't find them, I've been told you can substitute it with basil, but I wouldn't do that personally. I would skip it all together. I just showed you guys garlic. Use about a half a bulb, just mince those right up. And these are oysters, these, I mean not oysters, well, oyster mushrooms. That's what they are. And these are the enoki mushrooms. I'm using two different types. You don't need to do that. I just want to do that. But just cut off the ends of it and you can throw those right into the pot as well. All right, I've boiled my kelp and my anchovies in about eight cups of water for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna pull all those out because we're not gonna use any part of that for the stew. We were just making a anchovy broth. And so to set those aside, you can pass, I mean, you can throw those away or you can eat them if you want to. Of course, they're edible, but again, you don't need them for this recipe. Now that we have our water boiling, we are going to go ahead and start adding our seasonings. I'm gonna start by adding my red pepper flakes. If it's too spicy for you guys, go ahead and reduce the amount. I used about a tablespoon's worth right into my pot. And then I'm going to be adding my red pepper paste. I am using about two tablespoons worth right into my pot. If you guys want it a little bit spicier, go ahead and add another tablespoon, well, half a tablespoon to tablespoon, depending on your preference. And then I'm adding my soybean paste as well. Now add your minced garlic right into your pot. And then all we need to do is go ahead and stir everything together and mash down your any kind of paste that you have left inside of your pot. We want everything to dissolve and make our soup base. Continue to let your broth simmer until everything is completely dissolved. We go ahead and mix it up a few times and make sure there's nothing clumpy in there. And then after that, let's start adding our veggies. This is the radish that we went ahead and cut up. Next is our green chili pepper. We're gonna throw that right into the pot as well. Once that's been boiling for a few minutes, go, let's go ahead and add our squash or your zucchini, whichever one it is that you have. And now it's time for all the crab. By the time you get done with all of your veggies, cutting those, washing those, having everything prepped and ready and set aside, your crab should be defrosted. 
and then all we need to do is throw these right into the pot. Now just cover the lid and all we need to do is let this sit for 10 minutes and cook. And that's it. Ten minutes later, this is how it should look. Your crab will be completely cooked. And all we're going to do is start adding the rest of our veggies that we had chopped up right into the pot. I'm going to start off with my tofu and start adding the rest of my veggies. Just so you guys know though, if you want to add more seafood to this, if you want to throw some shrimp in there or something, go ahead and do so at this time because those are foods that basically cook really fast. Then add your crown daisies, go ahead and grab anything else that you have remaining and just pile that right on top however you want it to look. I'm going to grab the mushrooms. I did end up using the whole entire package of the oyster mushrooms and with the anaki mushrooms I only used about half, maybe a third of it just to lay on top again. Place your green onions however you'd like, I just went ahead and chopped them up into like thirds and threw them right in there. All you need is the one green onion. And if you use the red chili pepper, go ahead and place those on top as well. See how it brings a pop of color? That's the only reason why I'm using this, so that's why I'm saying it's optional. Go ahead and cover this up and let it cook for another five minutes on a medium heat setting. And then you're done. Five minutes later and this is how it looks. And I'm just gonna throw some of the broth right on top of our veggies. And all you have to do is serve it. Enjoy this dish by itself. If you're trying to stay low carb or if you just love carbs like I do, enjoy it with some rice. If you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it. And until the next meal, thank you again for watching. Watch me cook.